Guys, how are you? Oh, we're feeling all right. We're feeling okay. okay. Yeah. Carmen? <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. So before we get into the new record, I, <laughs> I, I want to start somewhere else. And um, what is one of the most recent records either of you have bought? Oh, I mean, I, I bought, bought a ton I of bought records. records today. Okay. Um, it's a disco band called Blue Feather. And it's called... Loving tonight, I think. I'm loving tonight. What you, struck you about this album? Uh, I like the band name, Blue Feather, and then I like kind of, you know, the smooth disco, kind of funk. Mm. It's got a good emotion. And well, you mentioned you bought a lot of records. So, is this something you picked up from your parents, or did they uh, listen to music in a different way? Yeah, both of our parents listen to records, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think probably slightly different things. I remember you talking about Incredible String Band. Yeah, my parents listen to Incredible String Band and uh, Traffic. My dad was in That's Traffic. That's cool, yeah. But, uh, but also like the be a lot of the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Classics, yeah. Bob Dylan. But I feel like like the... I think I probably thought that like the White Album was like music for kids when I was little. Like, yeah. And the same with Incredible String Band. Talking Heads, Depeche Mode, um, OMD. Okay. Okay. Um, new, and then New Order. New Order. Prince. Prince. Uh, there's lots. It's like uh, ingrained in our systems. They were supposed to be using synthesizers and drum machines, mm -hmm. stuff. The same way that Conan grew up playing guitar. Yeah, well, I had one question. <laughs> Go ahead. Do, do you, do you, Ben and Andrew, do you buy these records off your parents? <laughs> no, <laughs> haven't yet. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after the third record, then uh, obviously you took it took somewhat of a break. Mm -hmm. um, f first of all, about that period, was there a, a time when you noticed that you, as a, as a, as the two of you, needed a break? Yes. Yeah, we both noticed. We both noticed <laughs> yeah. that we needed a break. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we hadn't really had a long break to, you know focus on hanging with friends and cooking pasta and home life kind of mm. stuff. Uh, we hadn't had one of those for a while. Right. So, so the first couple of weeks then, did, <laughs> the first couple of weeks, did you kind of stay away from music entirely? Maybe even months? Um, I don't think so. Maybe there's one, there was one week where I think I only listen to harpsichord music. But other than that, which I guess is technically music, so. That, uh, when, when then did, after, after kind of taking that break, when did the process of, of thinking about a new record pop up again? Because I, I think I read somewhere, Andrew, that, that you kind of said that people, uh, after the third record, kind of counted uh, the band out. Oh, I don't know. I don't really think that that's the case. But I think it's that thought went through my head, mm. you know, like little moments of doubt. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. Sometimes you go through troughs. I think we, we really wanted to work on new music, like, for for a while. Like, even while we were touring for the last record, I think we, we were excited about making music, but we, uh, I think we didn't realize how important it was to take time away. Like we were, we were putting all this pressure on ourselves, but we didn't realize like the most obvious thing, which is that like you have to approach it with the right frame of mind. And so 
I don't know, I think somehow we tricked ourselves into doing that, but it took, it took a long time. Mm. Was there a, a turning point for you where, where kind of the, the new album, Little Dark Age, kind of started to take shape, or, or at least the, the, the yeah. kind of groundwork? It involves this man in the screen. Is he still there? Yeah, he's there. Um, because we, uh, I think we kind of in the past had have when we're writing we've like isolated ourselves and kind of cut things out and this time we we the first song that we ended up finishing was called When You Die and uh, like one day in the studio like Conan was there and Nabs and Ariel Pink and uh, Sebastian Tellier and like we all got them to sing on the chorus of the song and uh, it was just like a really good feeling in the room, you know? Why did this change? Why did you feel the need to kind of surround you with more people? Like that's kind of our natural way of working is to, to like isolate ourselves. Right. And I think having like Patrick, our producer around, like he, he really encouraged us to be more casual about mm. recording and, and have people stop by and, and then we realized that that was a good idea. <laughs> like it, it was like this, this thing that we'd been not denying ourselves for no reason. Right. And well, we have Conan here. So, yeah. so what kind of uh, effect did, did working with people like Conan have on the album in, in terms of sound, but also kind of the, the experience? Uh, like I said earlier, the what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a very positive influence of. Uh, like friendship and uh, kind of like companionship that came from working with friends and companions. And uh, for me, like Conan, I really appreciate his, his pace and my kind of patience and kind of maybe he's taught me through our friendship to, to be get less like uh get less anxious and stressed out about things that maybe are insignificant and i think that had a positive effect on us making music too because we took it a little less seriously like it was more playful in a good way right because what would these things be then that you felt anxious but is is it about how people might react <laughs> to new music and and that kind of stuff i think it's more based on just uh, it's like self doubt mm. kind of thing, like not having confidence in yourself. Creatively. Creatively, yeah. I can imagine that's good. that's quite difficult when you when especially in the writing phase. So, so um, what was one of the first songs then that that where you felt okay? Now we have something. Now I I, I love this. What we just made. Um. Well, that, that was uh, When You Die, the song okay. that Conan sings on, right. and... Uh, <laughs> I have a fond memory of um, um, When You Die recording. Really? Yeah. Do you remember uh, Sebastian Tellier was re recording, and I was, I was asked to come in, but um, <laughs> he was coming in to... To see you guys, and I uh, hadn't replied to the message, a few messages actually about coming in, and then I didn't realise that Ben's studio was right beside the one that they were doing. And I arrived with my guitar, and then they thought I was. They saw me coming in. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm almost running out of time, so I can't oh, okay. have to push through the moment. Okay, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Well, that's a good yeah, story. Yeah, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the, the themes then, and 
were you already uh, decided on kind of where the album would go in in terms of themes? And because there's a, there's kind of an in the tongue in cheek indictment of social media and uh, those kind of things. So we didn't really know. We at some points we didn't even know if we were making an album. Like we thought maybe it was going to be you know split out into singles or EPs or something like that. And it wasn't kind of until the end when kind of around when we wrote the song Little Dark Age that we realized that that we actually had made a record that had all the kind of themes that tied it together. Mm. Oh yeah, I forgot what happened until just now that we uh, we actually tricked ourselves, me and Ben, um, into finishing the record by saying that we were going to start writing songs for another record. Mm. And that we wanted, <laughs> and that this we is true. it's true, and that we wanted that record to be kind of like poppier, like electronic, <laughs> and so then we like started writing songs for that record, mm. and once we had written a couple songs, we still for like a month were like, yeah, this is this is for another thing, mm. um, and then at some point we realized that if we used those songs for what we had been working on. Uh, that it would complete a full album of music. <laughs> it's really dumb. But it worked? It worked, yeah. We tricked ourselves. We wrote a couple songs and then that was it. How far along were, were you? Because you say you were thinking about writing more poppy uh, electronic music. So, so how yeah. far along were kind of what, what, how much did you already have and how much of kind of what you wrote after ended up as the album? I mean, that was, that was like the end. We had like um, six songs, maybe, and then lots of song ideas. And then we wrote Little Dark Age and Me and Michael. And uh, that's what led to the finishing of the album. Final question then, because you say this, this uh, recording experience has been uh, a little bit more comfortable for you because of the kind of the people around you. Mm -hmm. Are you now worried what people are going to think about the new record? Do you still have uh, certain ambitions for the, for the album? I think we have ambitions for it, but that's like mostly to have it be something that people can connect with. Because I think we were trying to be more focused on the current themes and, and now. Like the, we, it wasn't like escapist or futuristic or whatever. It was like kind of just trying to be like human and, and now and uh, I think along along the road we kind of lost a lot of the concern about what people are going to think or even how it fits in as in GMT and we're just more comfortable yeah all right gentlemen thank you very much for your time Connor thank you thank you, thank you. you're welcome <laughs>